Hey, Sound Engraver here. Welcome back to another demo in Super Collider. Today we're going to expand on what we had seen previously last week with oscillators and how oscillators are used to manipulate sound files. Let's go ahead and hear this sound. Right, so that's a nice long sound file for our manipulation purposes. Now here we have our synth def for our sawtooth oscillator that we had used last week. And I'm using this syntax as a model for the following oscillators, three oscillators I'm about to present to you. All right, our first oscillator is the formant frequency oscillator, this Eugen here. And it generates a set of harmonics around a formant frequency, a frequency that peaks at a given resonance. And we will need our fundamental frequency. The following arguments needed are the fundamental frequency value, our formant frequency value, and our bandwidth value, and this must be greater than or equal to our fundamental frequency. I have included these in my list of arguments here, and this is my variable, this line of syntax right here, my fundamental, my formant, and my bandwidth. And I have scaled it at 0.8. And with our sound file, we're going to need another signal that includes our sound file multiplied by this formant eugen and scaled by our amplitude value. So let's go ahead and explore and see what this sounds like. All right, so let's keep the fundamental frequency at 200 or 300 hertz and mess around with the formant frequency value. And we will keep our formant frequency at 400 and play around with the bandwidth value. And don't forget to free your synth there. All right, next is our phase modulation oscillator. It will also need an extensive argument list. Our first argument is going to be the carrier frequency, then our modulator frequency. 
with an index value in radians, though I just keep it at zero, and also a modulation input value in the value radians, and I go ahead and keep that at zero as well. I have it included here, and this is my variable, my line of syntax there. I've scaled it with our amplitude. I've multiplied my signal, my sound file, with this Eugen. So let's go ahead and have a listen. Let's go ahead and play with the modulatory value here. And I had forgotten to delete that line here. I'm just simply going to keep that at the default zero. And I also had forgotten to include the visuals here. This is my formant frequency visual. And compare that with the phase modulator oscillator. So you can see quite a difference there. I find that using these plot methods are very handy for visual cues. All right, lastly is our pulse, which kind of acts as the LF pulse. We've got a pulse wave generator with width modulation, and not so extensive an argument list, a frequency value, and a width. And it does mention here that 0.5, between 0 and 1, 0.5 makes a square wave. And here is the visual. So I start with a pulse frequency of 2 and I have the width 0 0.5. And much like the same syntax, we've got our sound file here multiplied by the pulse variable here and scaled by our amplitude. And I've noted just for myself, and I would say it's, it's good for anyone, that uh, it's, it's more ideal to keep the values 10 or less. It's pretty interesting that, that this width value gives a bit of rhythmic sense, but I don't think it should be used for rhythmic purposes. It very well may, but that is to be explored for sure. So those are three more oscillators for your exploration purposes, and I hope it gives you some insight on how to manipulate sound files and generate new sound and new textures within these sound files and from these sound files. So yeah, 
I hope you enjoyed that demo and that listen. Always be on the lookout for sound experimentation every Thursday, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching and listening.